Welcome to the Kingsgate Youth Service. I'm Andrea. I'm Kirsten. And we have got a challenge for you. All you need for this challenge is one shoe. Not sponsored by Adidas. Now you've got your shoe, we can begin the challenge. Here's my sister to Lovely demonstrate. Assistant. Lovely assistant. To demonstrate the challenge. First, you will need to put the shoe on your foot. Like this. Sort of, not really, no. Oh. I need you to lie on your back. Okay. And we balance the shoe on your leg. Bring your leg up. Just like this. Right. And what next? Now you need to do a full roll without dropping the shoe. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's not how you do it. Hours later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so it's a tricky one, but let's see if you can do it. If you can, post it on Instagram. We want to see you complete the shoe challenge. You want to try now? Okay. <laughs> One of my favourite parts of the week is youth life groups. These are on Mondays and Tuesdays and if you want to get involved, here's the promo with more information. So here we are at one of the youth team leaders' houses. Have you guessed who lives at this door? Let's find out. Hello! Hey, it's Phil. Hello. Uh, come on in, come on in. I'm uh, just making myself a sandwich. Ah, do you mind if we ask you a few questions while you do that? Not at all, go for it. Ah, good, good. Describe yourself in a hashtag. Hashtag boom. <laughs> Uh, what's one thing people don't know about you? Lots of things. I, I don't know, but if you don't know it, you probably shouldn't know it. <laughs> um, what's your wake-up ritual? Um, waking my wife gently and making her a cup of coffee. Good job. Um, what's your favourite time of day? Morning. What's the biggest surprise you've ever had? Fatherhood. Mm -hmm. Like, no one can prepare you for that. What three things can't you live without? Can't live without chocolate. Chocolate and chocolate. <laughs> okay, okay. Family, faith, 
and Choco. <laughs> um, what's your favourite app? Um, magic Seaweed, kind of check out the coastlines all over the world. What's the most adventurous thing you've ever done? Ah, uh, like surfing in Big Surf and like gourd scrambling, rock climbing, caving when you don't like small spaces, all of those things. A superpower you would want? Uh, to be a time traveller. Best piece of advice you've received? Stay connected to Jesus. Best piece of advice you'd give yourself, uh, your teenage self? Stay connected to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would you like to be remembered for? Helping young people stay connected to Jesus. That's a bit threatening, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Best way to chill? Um, doing something active, like playing golf, probably. Uh, if you could master a musical instrument, what would it be? The piano. But I love the sax. That would be super cool. Uh, best gift you've ever received? Um, a snowboarding holiday from you. Uh, best gift you've ever given? Um, him over there. Check him out. My dog, Gorgeous. Sammy. Like, that was a gift to the girls um, on Christmas. Dark chocolate or milk chocolate? <laughs> Any chocolate. <laughs> Star stairs or elevator? Um, it depends whether I'm in a lazy mood or not, but uh, probably uh, both stairs and elevator. Summer or winter? Always summer. A dessert you don't like? I like every dessert. Let's come on through to uh, the conservatory. A skill you're working on mastering? Oh, so many. Um, patience. <laughs> I think you might agree. <laughs> uh, sweet or savoury? Um, sweet every time. And your go-to for having a good laugh? Um, my mates and my brother. Like, he's always funny and goes too far every time, but so funny. <laughs> and uh, anything you'd like to say to the Kingsgate youth? Um, we miss you guys. Be good. Keep your parents happy. Stay safe. And uh, we can't wait to see you soon. So, um, boom! Oh, thanks a lot, Phil. <laughs> see ya. Bye. Bye. Did you guess right? Let us know in the comments. And now it's time to hear from Jake. He's got a great message prepped and I'm so excited to hear it. But first, let's pray. Yeah, God, we thank you that we are still able to gather together online and that we're able to have fun, but we're also able to hear what you have to say to us. We pray right now as Jake speaks that we can just hear directly from you and get a new sense of your love and presence with us in each and every moment. Amen. Well, good evening, young people. I hope you're well. My name is Jake, and it's an absolute honour to bring the word tonight. Um, wherever you are in the world, is, uh, you're very welcome, and it's an absolute pleasure to have you with us. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the armour of God, you know, and what it is to be fully protected in our walk with God. We're going to be looking at Ephesians 6, so if you've got your Bibles, get them out, follow along with us. Um, you know, it'd be great for you to, uh, to read along. I don't know if you've ever seen the film Captain America. It's one of my favourites. It's a Marvel film. Uh, and Captain America, if you've ever seen him, has a very distinctive shield. It's a very strong shield. Um, it's made from a very, very special material. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's a weapon as well as a great defence. I believe that the armour of God is very, very similar to that. You know, that um, it distinguishes us, you know, even though you can't, you may not be able to physically see the armour of God, it distinguishes and sets us apart from everybody else. Just as Captain America is very different from all the rest of the superheroes because of his shield, I believe that we're exactly the same. In Ephesians 6, uh, Apostle Paul writes a letter why he's in prison, okay, and he's writing this letter to the followers of Jesus to basically inspire them in their faith, to give them some practical pointers about, you know, some of the things they can do, some of the things to be aware of, and some of the armour of God that they need in their lives. It's a great, powerful metaphor that Paul writes, and I'm going to read the passage from Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 17 first, just so we can hear what Paul has written. And then I'm going to break it down and, and you know, identify the six pieces of armour that Paul, Paul speaks about and what they mean in terms of the metaphor. So Paul in, uh, in Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 17 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. 
For our struggle is not against the flesh and blood, but is against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the darkness world, and against the spiritual forces of the evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, and with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith from which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So that's a massive metaphor, but there are six major pieces of armour running through that, which I'm now going to go through. So the first one, the buckle of truth. So that means to focus on Jesus, okay? Focus on the truth of Jesus, okay? And all through the Bible, the truths are written about Jesus, okay? And what basically that belt is there is to remind you to stand on the truth and not the lies of the enemy. Number two is the breastplate of righteousness. Not our righteousness, it is Jesus' righteousness, righteousness, which is to protect us, okay? Well, your vital organs, obviously, are from your neck to your, to your waist. And obviously, that's the, the, if you look at any modern armour, that would be the main kind of bulk of armour will be between the neck, which is prefer, protecting your vital organs, such as your heart. Your heart is a very delicate thing, you know, not just a physically, but an emotionally way as well, you know. And what that breast of righteousness does is just protects that. Shoes from the gospel of peace, you know, share the message of Jesus, you know, go out and share the message of Jesus. Let your feet and let your feet guide you through, you know, your path with Jesus and your walk. Um, number four, faith, you know, the shield of faith. It's one of my favorites, this. Um, your faith in God isn't just um isn't just believing in god faith is something that grows you know so what you can imagine you know you start with a very small shield is what in my mind you start with a very small shield and as you grow in your faith with god you get a bigger shield and i don't know about you but would you rather be standing behind a really small shield or a really big one i think i'd choose the big one number five is the helmet of salvation now when we give our lives to jesus we place on the helmet of salvation which protects our minds you know in a, in a world where there's so much temptation and so much feed into our eyes and ears the helmet of salvation that we place on our heads in the, in the morning every day is going to protect our minds from the what the world and the enemy can throw at us and number six, finally, the sword of the spirit. This is your weapon. You know, it is the word of God. Um, it is, it is um, the Bible, the scriptures. And, uh, and uh, you know, through Jesus' life, he was tempted by Satan three times. And all three times, the, the way that Jesus combated the, de the, the devil and Satan, the enemy, was to quote scripture, you know, was to use the sword of the spirit. It's one of my favorites being a, being a, bro, a bloke bloke. I like, the, you know, the thought of having a sword. You know, I don't know if you was ever a kid and you, you liked having a sword, but having a sword and, and slashing away. And that could have just imagined, you know, just throwing, you know, scriptures at the enemy and just winning that battle. Um, so we are engaged in a battle. You know, point two, we are engaged in a battle. Uh, what does that mean, we're engaged in a battle? Well, when we enter this world, there is a spiritual battle going on. Now, just to be clear, even though that battle is won by Jesus dying on the cross, there is still the enemy lurking out there. If you look at any major battle, you know, the bulk of the battle, even though the bulk of the battle is won, there will still be pockets of enemy resistance. And that's exactly the same as what's happening in the spiritual world. You know, even though that, you know, Jesus, you know, finished it on the cross and the victory was won, the enemy is still there to tempters to try and lure us in you know wherever it can um, when you make the decision to to give your life to jesus you also make the decision to join god's army on a spiritual level which is why we need the armor of god okay um, and it's a great thing it's a great privilege to be in the army of god and you probably see you know some of the you know the term prayer army etc army is used in a massive way because it's a it's a it's a word of strength you know it's a it's a word you know of companionship and doing it together there can be different seasons as a as a, as a Christian and some of them seasons can be really easy seasons and some of them can be really hard and there can be really easy temptations that we can resist and there can be really difficult ones so you want to make sure that in this battle that we're prepared we've got the armor of God on all the time 
I know that there's seasons in my life as an example where I've had to really dig in uh, and use my, you know, sword in the spirit and my shield of faith. Um, you know, in just a recent time, my, my wife, Leanne, who I absolutely love to bits and I'll try and get through this without getting emotional because I absolutely love her to bits and anyone who knows me, you know, knows I do. Uh, she became, you know, became ill, uh, you know, and uh, had, a, had an illness relating to her heart. And I had to, you know, really stand firm, you know, in my faith with God that he would come through and heal her. Uh, and, you know, and I would, I would use my sword of the spirit. And there was a, there's a couple of examples where there was some days where I was feeling, do you know what? I, uh, people would say to me, how are you guys feeling? I said, you know, I'm feeling a little bit down. I'm feeling a little bit beaten by this. You know, it's just, it's not getting better, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then one day, you know, God just said to me, Jake, you need to pray. You need to pray like never before. Now, I know that term gets used quite a lot, but like never before was a word from God for me as well. When I did, I got the sword of the spirit and I went for it. And do you know what? Somebody asked me at a Friday night youth session, actually, you know, how are you feeling? I said, I sit, I'm not, I'm not taking it anymore. I'm not taking it anymore. My feet stand strong in the Lord. My have my faith shield up and I have my sword in the spirit. And praise God, ever since we prayed, you know, together and we asked for healing, um, you know, she's not had another symptom since, you know, and I'm believing that she's been, she's been healed and, and praise Jesus for that. So how can we put on the armour of God? Well, we can put it on by choice. You know, it is a choice to put on the armour of God, you know. And when can we do it? Well, we can do it, I prefer to do it in the morning, because if we're going to face a day in the world, then I want to be protected from that, okay? Because I think that's when I'm most probably going to be vulnerable. When I'm going through my day-to-day -day at work, etc., I want to make sure that I'm fully protected, that my mind and my ears and my, my, my integrity is, you know, in line with God. Um, but it is a choice. You've got to ask God. And how can we do that? Well, you just need to pray. You need to pray to God that, you know, to ask him to put on the armour of God, whether that's going through the six points of armour, you know, one by one to ask God to put them on or just asking a quick prayer, you know, depending on how much of time you've got. Some, some mornings I'm asking the six points, some mornings I'm like, God, protect me, armour of God, boom, and out the door. You know, we all have busy lives and sometimes it's not easy. I get that. But if you're like, a, like me, uh, I love mornings. But even if you don't love mornings, make that effort, you know, get up and ask God and pray. You know, if you don't know what prayer is, prayer is literally just talking to God. It's as simple as that. Just say to God, do you know what, God, come into my life today, you know, reapply the armour of God in my life and make sure that I'm protected at all times. We also need to stay alert. We need to pray and stay alert. You know, that's really key that we pray and stay alert during this. OK, the enemy, like I've mentioned, will come at us when we're least expecting it. You know, as soon as he sees a sign of our weakness, he'll pray, pray on that. You know, and that's what we've got to be alert to. So, you know, so if you're really, really tempted by something, you know, so you can't stop spending money or something, the devil will throw things at you all the time, you know. And what we've got to make sure is that we're protected with the armour of God all the time. Get that shield of faith on, get that breastplate of righteousness on and just be alert to it all the time. And it's a continuous thing, you know, like your faith, you know, your shield getting bigger that I mentioned, you know, it's a continuous thing. It isn't just we put the armour of God on and then we walk off and, you know, because I'm sure that if you put the armour armor on in real life, you know, it would get rusty. We need to look after it, you know, we need to reapply it, you know, get new armour every single day and be alert. The sword of the spirit can be a great weapon of attack and, the, you know, the shield of faith can be a great defence. And I want to just make them key points that sometimes the seasons, you know, we need to stand together, you know, and uh, it's really important, you know. So if you're not part of a life group, it's really important that, you know, you, you, you get involved you get um, you get connected because it's a lot easier when you know like the apostle paul was writing in ephesians you know he was writing to encourage his fellow fellow followers you know and i think we need to do the same we need to make sure that we're praying for each other making sure that we're fully fully protected all of the time um Stay alert to the enemy and take ground, you know. What I mean by take ground is, you know, some seasons I feel like I'm kind of stuck still a little bit, you know, and not doing anything. And other seasons I feel like we take massive advances in ground, you know. And what I mean by taking ground is if, if I've got something in my life that I know I need to change, you know, maybe, I, you know, something really silly like I need to stop eating so many sweets, you know, because of the sugar intake, you know. And, you know, and, and that can be really, you know, that can be a temptation, you know, as, as silly as it sounds. But some 
sometimes, you know, going six months is, you know, without having any sweets because I've chosen to do so and I've prayed about it, you know, is taking ground. That's taking ground from the enemy. Um, so I hope that's clear. So guys, as I bring this message to a close tonight, um, I just want to offer an opportunity of prayer to invite Jesus into your life. I want to pray for two groups of people tonight. The first group of people I want to pray for are, uh, are the people that have never, ever invited Jesus into your life. If you're sat there tonight and felt challenged and thought, you know what, I want Jesus in my life, I want the armour of God, you know, and you've, you've recognised that you've been in a spiritual battle, I want to just let you know that I'm going to lead you in a short prayer which will be, enable you to do that. It says in the Bible that we all fall short of the glory of God through sin. But the great news is that because of Jesus dying on the cross, all sin is forgiven. And now we can leave our past behind us and start a new life in victory. As I lead you in this prayer, I just want you to mean it, you know, say it either aloud or in your heart. But what you'll be saying is basically, I want to enlist in God's army. I want Jesus to come and just take over my heart and my whole life and transform me from the inside out. You'll be saying, I'm leaving the past where the past needs to be left and we'll be looking to the future. So I'm just going to lead you in this short prayer. And if you want to follow along with me, feel free to. Dear Lord God, thank you for your perfect love for me. I choose right now to give my life to you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the stuff in my life that has not been right before you. Please forgive me now and fill me with your Holy Spirit that you can put on the breastplate of righteousness and the full armour of God, that I may live my life fully on guard for you. In Jesus' amen. Well, that's fantastic. And if you've made that prayer, congratulations. I am guarantee it'll be the best decision you've ever made and you won't look back. I'll give you some resources at the end that will help you take them next steps, you know, and help you get connected because that's the best thing you can do right now. The second group of people I want to pray for are the people that are sat there and maybe strayed away from God, chose to do the things, you know, on their own and chose to do the wrong things, you know, and let temptation take the better of them. I'm just going to pray for you right now that you'll just realign yourself with God, you know, and that Jesus will just reinvade your heart. So, Lord, as I pray tonight, Father, I pray for every young person that's watching this. I just pray that if they've swayed from the path, your path, God, and your plan for their life, Father, that they'll just realign themselves right now, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will just become upon them and it will just take over and just realign their life. I just pray that you'll invade their hearts, their minds, and every single bit of their body from their tip of their toes to their heads, Father. Lord, I just pray that you'll be there for them as a rock and you'll just be there as a comforter, Father, wherever they are at. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I mentioned about some resources. If you prayed that for the first time, again, congratulations. I absolutely love that you did that. But if you want to get some more resources and get connected, we have a special website link that will be popping up on the screen, kingsgate.church forward slash youth next steps. Check it out, get connected, and, uh, and there'll be some great resources there for you. We're now going to be led in another worship song, and it's going to be called Our God is Greater. So enjoy. See you soon. Take care. Turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Not like you. Into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. Not like you Sing our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God
into the darkness and into the darkness you shine and out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you no one there's none like you oh yes our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer awesome in power our god our god we sing our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer awesome in power our god our god you're awesome in power your spirit at work within us you are for us you are with us so we sing and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what could stand against and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what could stand against what could stand against Our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, you're awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. You're awesome in power. Our God, our God. working out, getting quarantoned. Please walk to the point of the boom system. Tap down AC with a cool system. When they come up in the club, we're blazing up. Got stacks on deck like a safety belt. And he ill, he will, he might gonna do. He pop out of love, he got a right gonna do. He cold, he don't, he might so. It's now, it's now. It's now time to hear from Jake, who's got some great. La 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 la. It's a chopper. It's a chopper. It's a chopper. Hold up. Wait a minute. It's a twenty-two. 